my name is Sergei Vishnevetsky. I'm development director of uh, Open Design Alliance. And today also Ivan Serbinovsky, it's Beam ROV solution team lead, uh, will present our interoperability solution for Avid files. And Igor Yegorachev, IFC project lead, will present our solution for IFC. Well, let's get started. And so what is ODA is working at is a framework for CAD and Beam interoperability. And uh, it, I think that we are the only organization who supports such set of formats for interoperability. It's both um, DWG, DGN files, and files for Revit interoperability and also for Navisworks files, we have interoperability solution solutions, but it's not the only thing that we have for our members. The other, other thing is uh, technology stacks that uh, have been developed for over 20 years by the moment, so we have a lot of things presented uh, there. And all those things allow us to have, I would say, unified to easy implement by our members some unified workflows. Well, I'll move forward and we'll see the supported formats that we have. And here is the visualization part, but certainly uh, to provide support for visualization part, we need to implement read, write support, and for uh, some files, more advanced uh, abilities. Drawings SDK. Drawings SDK and uh, the first things, the complex object editing where we supported the, some additional uh, support for associative network additional things uh, to provide more complex relationship between objects. So some many parameters are recalculated automatically now. Other features that we are working at at the moment is model documentation overall large feature quite complex and this feature is still in progress. I mean not only the things that AutoCAD save some cache data in inventor for format inside the DWG but also from mathematical point of view it required something like uh, precise hidden line removal algorithm implementation uh, that is going that is uh, already in progress on our side, but also associative network improvements, and so maybe not all things, I mean, can be easily see as a result. So the feature is not ready yet, but a lot of improvements already uh, done uh, that uh, are can uh, can be used can be used in, in our applications here on this slide there are some things that should be do it's just uh, that I mentioned it hidden line removing things uh, and it's not hidden line removing on the facet model it's a, a hidden line removing on the BRAP modeling functionality other things that sectioning uh, for section detail view and uh, dimensioning and all those things are calculated automatically when uh, initial model is changed. So in progress yet, but many things uh, are already. Other things, uh, and again, again, it was pushed by Dave initially, and a year ago he wrote me a mail, guys, you don't support such nice features, non-com properties. It's uh, features that allows to have cross-platform access to properties, not only on Windows, but on Mac platform. And we implemented this feature on the kernel level. So we implemented it for DWG files uh, for all properties, but also we did not do that. We did a step forward, and I'll talk about this step forward a bit later in my presentation, but here we are talking about DWG and it works for DWG, not only on Windows, but on Linux, on Mac. DGN, DGN, other format from the drawings, uh, SDK, uh, priority for us. We worked at uh, a number of improvements and one of the multis reading was added and uh, I'm pretty sure it's actively used in the IntelliCAD. Again, common data access part was implemented. I'll talk a bit later about this geometry import between the ACES and Parasolid improvements were done. Some API enhancement were done. In the drawing SDK, not only DGN format DWG, but also we are supporting a number of uh, vertical extension, and one of them, architecture historically, is presented as a part of common membership, and three are organized as uh, special interest groups. Here I mention some what's about civil that we are extending 
creation support and this uh, video shows uh, some creating of alignment and some table feature on the civil object so just pick two points yeah and comment good it's done so i mean that uh, on the civil it's quite mature project quite stable one but we are working on the object creating functionality the next one is mechanical sdk also in a quite stable uh, state with support of almost all entities for priority standards that were defined by special interest group well the new one the new one is a map special interest group for support the map extension for dwg for file format and we already it was started only this year but uh, a lot of entities are presented in the in the file format certainly not all of them uh, are supported yet but the good thing is that the main uh, information is placed in the limited number of entities and here you see the first visualization result uh, that we uh, have via if uh, do provider from the third party from the third party map place it and here is there is a comp how this uh, result can be comparable with uh, what we have in AutoCAD. Well, other things that we are providing uh, support for other languages for programming and uh, one new for this year is the Python support. And uh, uh, here is a just a small example that how easily can be simple viewer implemented on the, on the Python with or DA now. Yeah, so it's run. Certainly not many comments are presented in this example, but just uh, as proof that our Python uh, Python's uh, wrapper work and uh, on the on the right on the right side you can see the some uh, part of code that uh, is responsible for zooming moving operations in this viewer. Well, other things that is important for us and uh, this feature was announced on our conference we significantly improved uh, point cloud support in uh, ODA SDK now we have read and write fun functionality we have visualization for large amount of data and we significantly work it and performance usual file one of your usual file it's quite small one but it uh, contains more than 100 million of points but uh, with level of detail it it's needs only to visualize uh, 25 millions uh, that is much faster and the next uh, slide contain the demo how we works with uh, 1 billion of files and those files 25 gigabytes and in our in ODA viewer it that file is open for just some seconds it takes only some seconds to open that file well certainly we are not opening the all 1 billion of points we are opening only using we are using level of details we are open about 17 millions of uh, points here but we can make a zoom and uh, on new level when we, we, we became closer we can regenerate the model and uh, works quite fast as you see here we can make zoom and on this level we can regenerate the model and get the new uh, level of details with uh, all appropriate points that we have on this level of details well so now we are moving to the beam part and in the beam we have overall now set of toolkits again quite unique set of sdk again no one in industry uh, support such set of sdk as in combination i mean so we have interoperability solution for revit files we have interoperability solution for navisworks files and we have a solution for ifc files so directly in the beam area and now Ivan Serbinovsky team lead of our beam RV SDK will provide detail hello everyone 
I'm Juan Serbinovsky. I'm team leader of BMRV projects in Open Design Alliance, and uh, I want to present to you our BMRV projects. So BMRV is a special interest in group in ODA, and this is standalone project for interoperability with uh, Revit files, and uh, it is cross-platform product and web-ready product. We are working with any Revit files like RFA, RVT, families, models, templates, and so on. During our work, we use another SDK, and this provides additional benefits for our customers. So, first of all, of course, we use a kernel SDK for reading data and for visualizer. Uh, so, we can do it on our side, but this also provided possibility to customers uh, open this data in Visualize, for example, and dr draw them in Visualize SDK, add some data like markups, for example, and uh, export this data from Visualize to another file format, mm, like DWG, for example. So another possibility from this uh, point of view is uh, um, working with Exchange, and uh, it provides our customers possibility to export Revit data to other file formats uh, directly from our data, from BMRV database to different formats like PDF, STL, and so on. Also, you can create a 3D PDF with a publish SDK. So, and um, first of all, it's uh, reading data from the file. We can open any file from starting from 2011 file format and we can provide full access to the data inside the file. You can get it in universal mode. It's convenient for dumping this data, for example, but this is uh, not so convenient for real work and for interaction with the data. So by this reason, we also develop a custom API. It's based on the latest file format for the latest release we're adding 2020 file formats. Currently it's base and any file format starting from version 2015 during opening will be converted to the latest file format. So in custom API, provide possibility to work with the data, with getting it, but uh, we also use it uh, in our internal algorithms, which I work in with data in the latest format, and extend custom API during implementation possibility to create different elements. We continue work on it. And another part of representation data which are stored inside the file is the parameters. File formats have, uh, we have BIMRV parameters. There are two versions of parameters, built-in parameters and the custom. You can get uh, for any elements, collect the parameters and get this list. But next, uh, for each parameters, you can get this data from the database. And uh, in, the, in our debug application, we have example representation of these parameters and we can represent it in two cases in built-in mode uh, which uh, show data like it is inside database and another version is a uh, custom mode we get uh, custom representation for parameters uh, and uh, convert the data by the settings in of the file so on the screen you can see example of this dialog, which are, there are possibility to change these modes, built-in and custom mode. So next one is common data access, uh, access which Sergey said before, uh, which was uh, implemented in kernel side, but from our side we also must support it for Beam RV projects. Uh, so for for Beam RV projects, this means we created a, a wrapper around uh, our internal Beam, par Beam RV parameters, which convert uh, our parameters to CDA parameters, and uh, you can, and anyone can use it in uh, general mode uh, from the kernel side. For example, on the screen you can see uh, result work with uh, this wrapper in our Visualize uh, SDK. Uh, on the screen you can see a BMRV file, each, uh, which are open inside Visualize, are drawing, 
And uh, on the screen you see, um, on the left side of the screen you see parameters for one element and the right side of this application there are three representation our database. It's not our um, internal representation we create for CDA additional version. It's closer to IFC style, to IFC tree. And we are going to use the same tree later during uh, implementation export to IFC. So, and um, another part of uh, work with data is visualization, visualization them. We can draw any geometry which are stored inside the file. It's usually different walls, roofs, and so on. Uh, a lot of uh, mostly B-Rep geometry. We support in visual styles. Uh, file format contains six visual styles inside. And uh, for visual styles, it's very important is material. Our materials has um, different colors for uh, realistic style and shaded mode. For, for example, on the screen you can see uh, two visual styles, uh, realistic and shaded. In shaded modes I use in mm, fill patterns. You can see them on the walls. And uh, using color for this style. But uh, in realistic style we have to use another uh, colors uh, for elements, for example, you can see on the roof of the building. And uh, uh, realistic style also using textures if they are inside the file. So we currently this all in production mode and, and works uh, well. But uh, another type of geometry is uh, uh, annotation elements. Uh, these elements uh, are not stored any geometry inside the files. So we should uh, read their data, create the graphical representation on the flight, and draw it. So on the screen you can see several levels, uh, the same procedure there are for different grids, uh, text nodes, and so on. But also uh, another type of geometry which is generated on the fly in is uh, different sections, different plans. This geometry also not stored in, inside the file and uh, we read this data. Our Visualize SDK creating uh, a section for this data and uh, gaps on the elements are filling by the material settings by cut and pattern. So on the screen you can see example of these buildings uh, are cutting and gaps on different walls, roofs, floors are filled by, by their settings. So Next uh, enhancement is a section box. This is uh, also six sections which are working in the same time. They also cut uh, different parts of elements and uh, we should uh, create this geometry and fill gaps on by cutting patterns. So on the screen you can see example of um, file in 3D view and uh, section box was it for, for this. So, and uh, example of some large model which are drawn inside our uh, debug application. So you see building, it was cut from different side and also the terrain was cut in, in, in this time for terrain. We also have to create uh, side uh, faces and fill it by patterns. And example of the same buildings in Visualize application the same building, you also can see tree for our file format for SDA. And uh, on the screen you can see several marks uh, in Visualize. And later this file can be exported in another one. Let's continue with creation data for the file formats. Here we can create set of elements now. First of all is the different curve elements. For BIM file, for BIMRV file formats is um, elements which are containing different uh, curves, lines, arcs, ellipt elliptical arc, and so on. Uh, it's possible to create this element and add it as to the database. We also provide possibility to create different views, plain views, cell views, 3D views, all views which are possible inside the format. And we also can create connectors 
which are used on different pipings, ventilation, heating, such systems. And also, much the most important part is the creation material, which are using later for period geometry, usually. And we also can create it, and it successfully works. But uh, from point of view, creation 3D geometry, and uh, keep um, customer geometry inside the file formats, there is such elements like direct shape, direct shape type, and freeform element. So on the screen you can see example, which was exported from architecture file format, which are based on DVG. So this file was exported to Collada, for example, and after this we import this geometry inside BMRV file format and store this geometry in direct shape. You can create mesh geometry, but you also using Brep Builder for creating Brep geometry, and all this geometry can be stored in, inside the file. But this is not parametrical geometry. You, it will be represented. You, you will see it, but you cannot interact with uh, these elements inside the file formats. And from this point of view, we continue work uh, on different parameters element. Uh, many most important parts is the creation families, different families, but uh, family geometry created from different uh, elements like extrusion, revolution, sweep, and so on, and the different Boolean operation between them. In this moment, we can create extrusion, revolution, and sweep. Most come for us, uh, we're using our build and modeler for this one. It's create uh, geometry for us. But for the file format, we should uh, create not only geometry like it is, but we must create a lot of additional information, different state, like this geometry was created. For example, for extrusion, we must provide information where, where the geometry was started, where it was finished, where side faces, side edges, like they connected with, with each other. This uh, add additional complexity for creation elements inside the file formats. So, and uh, next, when you have family inside the file, you won't create family instances. So we also work in, in this area, and we divide the, them by complexity for two parts. Not hosted family, this is different furniture, like uh, tables, chairs, and so on. And um, hosted family instances. This is um, different windows, and so on. And uh, hosted family instances is a more complex element from point of view create, creation them inside file formats. We have a modify host element. We must cut part from this element, put uh, family instance inside, and uh, fill all references between, between these elements for interaction without them. So, and I want to show current progress with family instance creation. This is a demo with a file format with a set of families inside. We want to create a couple lines. By these lines, we will create uh, some basic walls. And uh, in this wall, we, we will put a couple of family instances, hosted family instances. This is what we can in this moment, but we continue work on another part of hosted families with more complex interaction between elements. And when we create walls in hosted families, we are going to create a set of not hosted families. It's a different furniture for this example. And uh, in result, we are going to see kitchen set of chairs, uh, table, a set of lockers, and uh, we continue creating different family instances for create the full model. Of course, in the result, this file also can be saved, and uh, if we you open it in uh, Revit, for example, you will see the same result like you see it inside our demo application during creation. Several more family instances for the finish in this model. It's quite complex model and result, and uh, we continue. 
create set of instances inside and uh, in the result we will see in the example we close to finish creation of our model and uh, currently we can rotate this a bit the example uh, you see different textures on the floor on the tables uh, this is a realistic mode for this example So, and uh, I want to show one more enhancement for creation is the creation of terrain element. And uh, after this, uh, we can create ter terrain by the set of uh, points, create special file for this, we select file, and you see result uh, of terrain by this building. After this, we add a section box, and you see the result, the terrain was cut, and the building also was cut uh, after creation this element. So, and the next is the um, possibility of our export to import. You can use uh, our kernel export possibilities, export to PDF, STL, SVG, and so on. We also added JSON export. Uh, it is possible to select one element or a view. And for one element, for example, we will uh, fill JSON file by properties of this element. And the result of su such JSON export, you can see on the middle of the screen. Uh, for If you selected a view, we will export a uh, set of elements which are drawn inside this view in JSON export. And uh, import, uh, I show you before, this example of Colada import, uh, which provides different geometry, um, possibility to import 3D geometry inside file formats, for example. And um, our plans with continuum um, of development, uh, first of all, is uh, creation different elements, creation families, continue work of creation different forms for families like blend and uh, blend sweep and also we are going to continue work on creation family instances like no, not hosted family instances release this functionality and continue work on creation hosted family instances which are using during works also boolean operation which also important for this functionality and uh, also we are going to create family export for directly from bmrv file format to ifc file format and uh, this all from my side thank you the next one is the ifc toolkit and i would like to start this uh, things uh, with also announcements that were done on our uh, uh, conference in Milan uh, about the about strategic uh, partnership between building smart and open design alliance and uh, certainly building smart is working in a strong on the standardization area but uh, ODA, ODA is going to put efforts to make ODA implementation a standard implementation for, for IFC. And uh, Igor will present you what we are doing for this. Hello, everyone. My name is Igor Igorchev, and I'm going to say some words about IFC SDK. Uh, several months ago, we uh, started to investigate uh, different IFC solutions. We uh, divided them uh, on uh, uh, three di uh, different groups. As, uh, uh, the first one is uh, free solutions, uh, which have uh, limited functionality. Uh, the second group is uh, professional, quite ex expensive solutions. And th uh, the third group is private uh, solutions, uh, which is closed for, from everyone. Uh, those are solutions of end-user applications, and uh, those uh, solutions are implemented inside of companies. Our EFC SDK uh, provides functionalities from all groups, of course, uh, because we provide functionalities of basic solutions which are free. We uh, provide uh, functionality um, of professional solutions, and of course, our EFC SDK uh, is open it for ODA members. 
Uh, so let's continue with SDK architecture at uh, the low level. We, of course, has, uh, have uh, IFC files with data described uh, with uh, Express Schema. And uh, we have implemented Express Compiler to get uh, C++ code of uh, classes uh, according to supported sch uh, schemas. The uh, next level of implementation is early binding API. Now we uh, support IFC 2x3 and IFC 4 schemas. Uh, classes are generated with our Express compiler. And uh, the next uh, level is late, late binding API. Uh, which provides an ability to work with any schema in common way. And using uh, this late, late bi uh, binding API, we are generating geometry and provide access to properties and uh, IFC model data. We are also planning um, to implement in future additional uh, features as high-level API, uh, and the sum validations, and so on. And of course, generated uh, classes and API are, are based uh, on our kernel SDK and uh, uh, totally in, in included in ODA uh, technology stack. So visualize, publish, and exchange API uh, is available for IFC also. Uh, uh, implementation of our uh, uh, API is highly motivated uh, by ISO specification. Not many free solutions provide such ab ability. So according to ICO uh, recommendation, uh, recommendations, we provide reading and writing of IFC files, uh, access to all schema definitions, of supported schemas, uh, access to IFC model on reading and writing. Users of our API can access to attributes and values in both late and early binding way. And uh, we also implementing an C-style SDI, standard data access interface, uh, which is uh, de uh, determined with ACO specification also. Uh, several uh, uh, products are using uh, C style until now. So we, uh, we want to implement it too. Uh, as I said before, we have Express Schema Compiler, uh, so we can get uh, C classes uh, fastly from. Uh, any of schemas provided by Building Smart. I believe uh, uh, this will not be a huge problem to generate API for future IFC5 schema or for any old schemas if needed. At the moment we uh, support uh, the most popular schemas is IFC2X3 and IFC4. You can see the differences on our cartoon movies. So differences are in graphic representations and uh, differences in colors are because uh, exporting application exports some entities and materials in different ways for different formats. The differences between early and light binding can be uh, described in few lines. Early binding uh, provides uh, classes with methods as get length, uh, get radius, and, and so on. So for every schema, it's needed to implement a common functionality separately. But a late binding access uh, provides an ability to get uh, values uh, with attribute names. So uh, this functionality, uh, this is layer of uh, professional implementations. This ability provides all those users to create common code for different schemas. Because for IFC schemas, because to the different schemas we are supporting at the moment, uh, there are a lot of similarities. 
So it is a good reason to use late binding in implementation. Here is an example of importing IFC file into our SDK and vectorizing uh, geometry using Visualize SDK. So we have support of standard way of uh, vectorization using GI and JS libraries. And uh, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, a collaboration uh, between IFC SDK and uh, Visualize SDK. Uh, we have a huge IFC file collection and implemented a lot of uh, popular, uh, most popular entities. So here you can see a huge file. And of course, as we internally uh, use late a binding way of working with IFC, uh, uh, such ge uh, ge uh, geometrical generation code will be automatically uh, compatible with uh, forthcoming IFC 5 format. Here on the demo, it's quite long, so I have to <laughs> explain. Uh, here you can see IFC model uh, vectorized with Visualize SDK. On the left side, uh, this is a navigation along uh, IFC spatial tree, and Visualize takes respons uh, responsibilities for isolating height uh, and so on. And uh, the next scenario will be sectioning of huge IFC model with Visualize SDK. So as, as you can see, I see entities are strictly connected with ODA technology stack. We support, as I said before, uh, the most popular entities. Here you can see a re a revolution, extrude on a polyline, and uh, extrude on uh, parametrical profiles definition, and uh, stairs are IFC ad advanced BREP entities, which we are support to draw with our implementation of our uh, BR interfaces. Uh, if the advanced BRAP entities uh, are often used in files uh, uh, to keep geometrical representation for proxy entities, so you can see differences. Uh, in IFC2 X3 format, uh, which doesn't have uh, IFC advanced BRAP, and uh, the second file is boundary representation for stairs it looks better than the faceted representation. Uh, at the moment, we uh, the default implementation of IFC for IFC modular, modular geometry is based on the faced modeler, and uh, we have reached some results with ODA solid modeler. Uh, you can see examples on, on the screen, and uh, we also have uh, implemented uh, modular generation for IFC based on spatial ACES modular, and of course we provide an abstract layer for our customers to implement uh, geometry generation uh, with modelers they use. So no problem to implement with open cascade or even per solid with any third party modeler. The significant part of uh, ODA libraries is converting between files and uh, now we support a conversion IFC files to DWG. You can see uh, differences in 
a common data access trees. Here is a special structure of IFC file and there well-known entities of DWG. So uh, geometry is uh, the same, but different data. And uh, uh, the next slide is, is about exporting uh, AEC architectural objects into IFC file. So I believe the functionality will be available in a few months. Uh, some future plans are about IFC XML implementation, with, uh, which is a part of a smart standard. We are also planning to implement MVD XML validation, high-level API, and uh, runtime express schema support uh, for a runtime support of any schema available. And of course, it's needed to say about uh, future multi-threading support and some infrastructural features. Uh, that's all from my side. Thanks for attention. And uh, there is an uh, additional slide. Uh, one more final word about the maybe IFC that we deal with IFC for a long period of time and we quite strong with supporting all those things that is supported in IFC. I mean that uh, a lot of third party toolkits and commercial and all open source ones usually support just file reading, writing, visualizations, that's it, but overall in building smart there are a lot of things around this, like we mentioned it MVD that can be applied to the IFC to check if this IFC is valid or not. And different formats, I mean not only the formats for the moment, at the moment uh, uh, for the two and five uh, IFC standards are in progress and also the formats of file storage are also some new formats are developed and investigation in progress uh, that can be used and we are on in time with uh, all these changes. So I briefly I would like to say some words about one more SDK, one more SDK from the our BIM area and its interoperability solution for work with Navisworks data. Navisworks data is Navisworks file can combine the data from different sources and here you see as example uh, DGN for example civil DWG files RVT files and all these data can be combined in one model using this uh, Navisworks and we at the moment provide read ability visualize ability here we have uh, we have example of uh, NV, NWD and NWC files that uh, contain the uh, cache geometry, cache geometry inside, and we, are, we were able to read right, and now you see the result of uh, visualization with an audio viewer. The next one is NWF file where we don't have a cache geometry inside, but just the references to external files, and in this model on the slide, you can see those two models uh, from the first slide, DWG file and DGN file, and here uh, they are combined in one model and successfully visualized by ODI because we have support for all those types of uh, files internally in our SDK. So a special interest group and uh, this file is also an important part of our BIM support, BIM area support. Our future, it's certainly not only visualization for, for Navis Fox file, but also the improvement and uh, data access API and uh, improvements in performance, multi threading, uh, property access, and uh, one more thing that uh, those files contain not only geometry information, but some additional information, and we are going to provide access for that information for those additional streams inside the file as well. One feature that I'd like to talk a bit more, you already heard about this in all in IFC, in Navisworks, when we talk in Revit in files interoperability, is the common data access. So we move it forward from that non com properties, just simply API, and we extended this functionality for all file formats that we have. So those fun that functionality is implemented on the basic kernel level, and uh, as a result, it's possible to get access to 
all uh, data formats that are supported in uh, with ODA SDK in a unified manner. Uh, overall functionality consists from two parts, is access to, to the model tree and the second one access to properties. And here you can see how it works actually in our visualize in ODA viewer. On the left, we have the tree for some uh, files like BMRV database. We implemented special model to create it in more convenient way. For some, it's just like IFC. It's, uh, the data is grouped in the file in a quite convenient manner. The properties for DWG, properties for IFC, properties for Revit files are supported at the moment as production release. Model structure is still in progress and all this functionality for our file formats is going to be released as production release in December. Next part of presentation is about technology stack, about the basin layer layers that uh, is uh, what is behind the, our interoperability SDK, and it includes the first here you can see visualize of open cloud for work and web, modeling our functionality, publishing functionality, and the first things as uh, visualize SDK. So certainly it's uh, I would say key thing to have ability to visualize different formats of data and we successfully implement such framework and I would say I think that it's maybe the best solution in the market for visualization of CAD and the BIM models at the moment. Let's see how it works. The one thing says about performance but about some advanced features that are important uh, not in general vis visualization engine but in CAD visualization things and one is here is selection and highlight and uh, he, you see that it works in uh, real time on an, a normal model without any delay just uh, highlight and also here we have okay sub entities highlight as well other thing is the collide when you able to make to, to, to check the intersection of elements uh, with other elements and you see that such uh, elements are highlighted in this model one thing as a sectioning and uh, the section can be applied for different uh, for different file formats as other functionality because it works on the visual, visualized level and also Visual styles can be also applied uh, to the result section uh, geometry. Oh, well, uh, the next things and requirements that we have from the Visual as SDK is the users uh, to uh, be able to render as much as possible of data and to do it as fast as possible. And here, uh, one thing about the, to make it fast as possible, it's, uh, our one technique is used it is a scene graph. And we made improvements on this area as well. It was implemented earlier, but now we uh, added fixed uh, frame rate functionality. So, uh, I mean, for such large model, you just saw how it uh, works, the movement of the model uh, before improvements. And now we are improve this functionality so even for very large model you can uh, dynamically work uh, in, in smooth manner with our visualize SDK. So for other things about to, to make uh, visualization faster is using level of detail and now we are supporting level of details on the visualize SDK level. It allows us to regenerate model uh, on the fly just to see how it works uh, how it works i mean that uh, when we have the model zoomed in after th that uh, it's uh, regenerated with the new level of details and uh, became more smooth depending on the model it, it's regenerating of the geometry for for b -Rep. but uh, other techniques it's the techniques of uh, progressive mesh that we implemented it's uh, again is going to be available in a month or so when for example uh, for existing already existing the meshes we can uh, get the visually almost the same result with significantly less amount of uh, triangles used inside so here you can see that the number of uh, how the number of faces is changed but the quality of the 
uh, model remains the same. So it's almost twice, certainly not, I mean, for example, at this level, but even uh, sometimes such model, uh, such amount of faces can be appropriate, but at least twice, even without the noticeable change, changes in quality of model. But uh, with other things, it, it's screenshot from our uh, viewer as well. And other thing about the level of details is not only the uh, the, the, the complex thing that every vertex is, uh, can have ad additional attributes. And here the model with such attributes is, is color. And uh, we are able to process those attributes while using level of detail for, for model. And here you see the same result that the uh, uh, model is still recognizable despite of the significant change of the faces uh, used for visualization. Well, the next thing we, we did is uh, ability to provide ability to visualize a large model on the devices with small memory. And it consists from uh, two parts. The first part we are using intermediate cache uh, VSF format. And we are using uh, loading only visualized elements. We are using only unloading of unused elements and partial viewing that we visualize only those elements that should be visualized in the view. And uh, other thing, uh, just move forward a bit. But, but the other thing that it was uh, the second part, but the first part that uh, when we work with real file, for example, with DWG, we force it to support partial import of the DWG data. So, so on every step, when a part of DWG object is loaded, a part of them is visualized, and part of uh, those objects unloaded after the, that visualization. And uh, during the hour, uh, it was implemented, I think, maybe a month and it's still in progress, but in our conference in Milan, we already saw implementation of, example of such implementation from one of our members, how it works on real mobile device. That uh, certainly it's a view only mode, but as a result, so for example, this device on one gigabyte of uh, memory, like I don't know, smartphone, it's possible to visualize quite complex models. Not this uh, maybe perfect quality, but at least it's possible to, to work with that model in uh, even with such device. Here's the reason uh, as an example of what we did on the area of uh, model devices support. We implemented uh, uh, certainly again as a prototype application our, our mobile viewer with main uh, the main part of the functionality, uh, and uh, this functional this uh, viewer on iOS is implemented uh, always uh, without Qt, so it's just a native application. You can uh, use and check uh, uh, different types of functionality, markups, navigations sectioning, all those things are working and you can just try it and uh, use it as prototype. Or uh, some parts of functionality can be used in your applications as well. Uh, well, the next uh, work that is uh, in progress yet, so we started work on the metal support. Why a metal? Because, of, uh, because Apple uh, announced that OpenGL, including ES2, is not going to be supported for a long period of time. And if one day uh, they decide to stop it at all, we'll be ready uh, to continue providing good support uh, on the of uh, all visualization functionality on the iOS devices as well. And here is a small example uh, how uh, it's our results, how it works on the iOS of this metal at the moment. Well, uh, some advanced features like opacity maps that we have implemented also in our uh, visualize, you can see here. Other thing, uh, bump mapping was implemented in visualize, so it allows us, and it means that allows uh, um, IntelliCAD creates uh, more natural and beautiful pictures, so uh, there is still things that can be improved in this area. Anti aliasing you already saw it implemented and use it in the IntelliCAD. Other thing that is should be done, it's also different in the picture, but you saw the quite similar result already in IntelliCAD 10. Uh, good. 
Markup editing has other uh, functionalities that is implemented in a unified manner, and so it can be applied to different file formats, and after that it's saved separately in VSF file, and uh, can be loaded uh, again to that file, and uh, use it uh, in collaboration framework. Well, again, we are considering this as a solution in the market in the moment for visualization of CAD and PIM area. And we have a lot of things to do. You can see here with some performance area, memory, uh, better man management. So other thing, uh, we are working on the working in the web. Every uh, uh, web application is moving to web, and we also have our solution, Open Cloud, that provide uh, we significantly refactored our previous solution, and we provided API to as a bridge to our internal API. Uh, our client provide the visualization of the web with uh, good performance. We have, yeah, uh, viewer that I mentioned already. The next one thinks uh, that we may deploy not only an Amazon services, but also an Microsoft Azure. And, and we are going to make some additional improvements that uh, it can be more easily deployed on Azure as well. A common data access functionality is available not only for desktop, but also for cloud. So you can uh, see here, for example, how it works for, uh, for DWG, that you also can have ability to provide access for those data. Markup editing is also working uh, uh, not only for desktop functionality, but with cloud functionality as well. And here is just a, a small example how this data, how DWG file can be used at markups for DWG files, and after that it can be saved to a separate storage and restore it, and uh, to keep the line with different uh, markup files. Well, automation library is one more thing that allows to make a lot of uh, things automatically uh, with open cloud. I mean, for example, we can make batch conversion on the server. And uh, here I just want to stop maybe a bit on the, our uh, roadmap and that we are going to have by December uh, the most of this functionality like user management, market sharing, uh, as production release ready by December. And after that, we'll return back to our uh, sprint release when we have uh, production release every four weeks uh, for open cloud. So it can be it can be a faster cycle to, to, to be use it in custom applications. Uh, facet modular functionality, uh, it's a quite long history. It was existing as a part of architecture, but this year we moved it to the, a separate product. And uh, now it's used in the architecture in the civil, but also it's used in IFC. We provided the public API, so everyone can use the facet modular as uh, separate. Every ODA m m member can use it. We provided this additional example, and here you can see them, and uh, it uh, should make easier to use the facet modeler as uh, in your application. But uh, also the announcement was uh, during this year that uh, we made a step in the solid modeling functionality, and uh, the our initial goal was to use it in for Revit uh, model uh, file support, for IFC file support, and for 3D modeling operation in the DWG. Uh, so we are supporting in BREP topolo topology, visualization of uh, generated BREP model. And uh, now a lot of those uh, things, so uh, it's already working, it's already working in the Revit files, in the IFC files and it's a part of the common framework. Uh, well, here you see some visual examples how it can be used. Also, it uh, working on the modeling functionality leads to some improvements in the, our G library. Uh, it's a small example of curve intersections and the surface intersections. And the one topic, one more topic that we have is the publish SDK and uh, uh, that allows us to provide uh, smart 
uh, publishing two PDF for in 3D 2D model uh, for the any kind of types of CAD data and first of all for those type of data that are supported in uh, our toolkit. It can be done in different models, 2D wireframe, 2D shaded, uh, in all real 3D, and uh, oh, well, not only simple one, but also complex model can be um, published uh, with advanced features like user control, and some animation templates can be used for 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 this. Uh, yeah, so see how it works and also not only okay let's move forward and not only and for for example for that b-rep model that we showed in the first uh, on the beam uh, revit presentation here we have uh, how the document can be created for that model just to be presented for uh, for, for 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 members for for, for clients for clients well, so for the, some words about the idea in general, I am already on the finish on of my presentation. That for 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 years, uh, ODA is only adding value, uh, providing for their members, and uh, it's a lot of things that we did for this year and what we are going to do for the next one. And this value is also available for IntelliCAD members via uh, certainly API that is used by by member of IntelliCAD consortium and uh, I think greatly improve the abilities and value of IntelliCAD uh, product as well. Thank you.